Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody bless the Lord. Praise God. Good to be here with you one more time to share the gospel of Christ and to encourage your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. You ready for another round in the word? Hallelujah in Christ's kingdom studies. Let's come on, lift your hands to the Lord and just acknowledge your heavenly Father. No means. Father, we thank you for this opportunity once more to share your word and to dive into your word, oh God, to uncover, excavate the mysteries, the hidden truths that are there for us to understand the dynamics of how your kingdom operates and the requirements and tools and benefits and things that are there provided for us, for us to have a successful finish and to have a great, hallelujah, communion and fellowship with you even unto eternity in your kingdom. And so we thank you for this great grace being released to us now. We praise you that you are the one that is overlooking the work to ensure that it is done how you want it to be done in the way it must be done. And so we humble ourselves to you and submit to your leadership in our lives and thank you for your, 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 your favor, God, in allowing us access into your kingdom and into your family and granting us the grace tonight to understand even deeper revelations of the truth you have declared in your word. We give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you all for joining us and for those who are joining us online. Thank you for taking the time to do so. We are aiming to get deeper and deeper in the word of God. Amen. In the mysteries of the kingdom. The word of God declares that the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent what? Take it by force. There are persons who are forcefully advancing into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we don't want to sit by passively and hope that we make it. Because if we don't, it will, not, it will be an eternal punishment. Amen. But if we do, there is an eternal reward. And that's more the reason why we have to focus more on the truths that are there and not come to a place of complacency where we believe that we all got it and we don't need to learn anymore because I think we are good enough where we are. That kind of complacency and at ease with the place, in the position in the kingdom can prove fatal, can cause us to become victims of the schemes of Satan. Amen. So there's a call for constant and persistent progression in the knowledge of the kingdom and in your growth in the Lord and in effectively employing the tools of the kingdom to wage spiritual warfare against the enemy. Amen. Praise God. So we are still on the matter of talking about the, the good shepherd. How we are talking about that this morning and I want to bring some highlights of that to you tonight that person must be able to identify godly leadership able to what identify godly leadership the thing is that because the devil knows that godly leadership is appointed to god's people there is a influx and overflow of false witnesses that the devil will send ahead to, to injure and to turn off people from even desiring or even looking for godly leadership. Because when one have been um, encountered with person who declare they are godly and don't live as the godly should, then there's a sense of disappointment and hurt and some people even carry offense and some have just given up the hope on even submitting to any godly leadership more than just saying well it's just me and the lord and maybe the bible <laughs> and whatever i can understand from it that's fine but if i don't god understands that i don't and that is a very dangerous place to be amen every soldier must be enlisted to an army and must have some commander or chief or someone who is giving him intel and the, 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 the um, geography of the area where he is at and to know what the enemy is doing to give him inside intel and that intel come from headquarters but God has also assigned 
um, what we call generals or those who are appointed in the leadership over the church to dispel, to release those revelations to the body of Christ. And that's what he calls in Ephesians 4, verse 11. The, 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 we call it the fivefold ministry. Hallelujah. But more so, we call it here the grace ministry. Hallelujah. And God ministers to us grace, but he ministers to us grace through the leadership he has provided for us in the body of Christ. Amen. And Christ himself is the chief, the leader, the head of the church. There's no doubt about that. Whoever has doubt, just have to go back to the scriptures and have those doubts eliminated and expelled from their lives that they can be clear that Jesus is the head. But in Ephesians 4, verse 11, hallelujah to 16, it says, he himself who speaks of Christ. He, and, and note here that he doesn't just say he gave some, but he says he himself gave some. There's a thing here that is showing that he personally handpicked and chose who he wanted to lead. Come on now. And it says, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some what? Pastors and teachers. Why are they given? Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints. Yes, though the saints are saints, they are cleansed by the blood of the Lord. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They still need to be equipped. They cannot say because I'm clean, my heart is clean, and I got the Holy Spirit. I don't need no equipping. Anything God will show me. That's what some will say, no? We've heard that often enough. But we know from the results we have seen and what is declared in the word that that proves to be fatal. Come on. Because he says, he didn't give these apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the saints as some accessory. What they call it? Accessory or accessory? Accessory. As some side thing that you put on just for extras to enhance what you already have. No. He's saying they are needful for this purpose. For the saints to be equipped because the saints are not just called saints, but they are called saints to do a work. And the work that the work this says this is this work of the ministry. Come on now. And he says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he says, it's not just to learn about how the ministry operates. But he says there are certain things they need to know about how the body of Christ operates. Since they are part of the body, they need to know how the body operates. Otherwise, there will be disorder. And we find several times in Paul's letters, Paul had to be correcting this order within the church, whether in Corinth or in any other church that he wrote, even in Rome, the Romans, we find that he still had to make correction to the church and things, and in Thessalonica. Oftentimes in Paul, Paul would have to make correction on things that people assume that they knew or thought otherwise on that he had to bring correction and bring them back to what Christ commanded that they should do. Huh? And also gave them revelation according to the wisdom God gave to him of what they should do in those circumstances that they were facing. Amen? So he says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he said, the saints are being equipped for the work of the ministry. And they are also being equipped for the edifying for the body of Christ to be built up, to be strong, to be firm, to be solid. Huh? To be rooted and grounded and totally insulated with the word and the power of God in carrying out their duties. He says, till we all come to the unity of the faith. In other words, there are some who still see some differences in how they see or interpret what the word of God says. And he says, they were given to bring correction that will be of the same mind, huh? of one speech. It wouldn't, shouldn't be that, no, 
is just opinion. You have your opinion, I have my opinion. The, the, the prophets and apostles and evangelists and pastors and teachers were given that the people would know what the word of God says according to what Christ revealed to them. And this was not opinionated. There's such a word. It's not something to be said that you can give your opinion and I give mine and everybody give their opinion and their view. No, it's, the scripture is not given for private interpretation. It's given for us to be on the same page in the same knowledge of the Son of God. That's why it says they are given to till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. There are some variances and differences that needs to be ironed out. And it says, leadership is given to bring that unity in the body that removes those differences that weaken the function of the body. Because we are one is saying, yes, I believe the Lord is so. Another one says, no, the Lord is not so. The Lord is this. Then that creates friction animosity and strife in the body and says where there is not leadership there is chaos and that is something we know whether it is physical or spiritual it requires leadership correct yes because in the midst of any group of people with people having different minds and thoughts and feelings and views and opinion there must be some that is appointed to have the final say. Because everybody cannot have the final say. Any country, any house, any business, any relationship that everybody have the final say ends up into chaos. Because there must be a leader or someone or persons that are appointed to lead that would have the authority to say what is final no sir otherwise we have endless arguments and things and nothing can be settled because no one has the authority to put the final stamp on what will go and that's why leadership is appointed got it because the disciples were not giving their opinions about how the ministry should go and Jesus take a consensus of what are the opinions and follow it. That was not how they learned Christ. And Christ is the head of the church. And he being the head of the church appointed other heads of the church under his leadership. Now so right so he says then these leadership must also follow his model they are not given to dictate or direct their own model they are there to follow the one who called them the one who himself gave them to be in that office in the body of christ which is the church got it so we are talking about identifying godly leadership. You have to be able to know first the first model of godly leadership that is clear and flawless and perfect to the T of what God requires is Christ. And we are saying then he has to be the primary model we are watching to, to identify what is of him and what is, what is not. But he says there are teachers that are given Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are given personally by him to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. One, two, to edify, build up, huh? and nourish and feed the body of Christ that till we all come to the what? Unity of the faith. It's not your faith, my faith, his faith, her faith, and, and them faith. No, it's one faith. That's why I say they are given to bring that unity. They are given to what? Bring that unity. That's why Paul could then teach in the sense uh, in Romans 14, he could then speak to the Jews and the Gentiles and bring them together as one body. 
Though he was an apostle to the Gentile, he still ministered to the Jews. And so there are still persons there who would say they honor or observe one day above the other, as he spoke about in Romans 14. One that observes one day above the other and one who observes all the day the same. Huh? And one, he says, who would not eat certain meats and one who would eat everything the same and give thanks. So he wasn't there saying, well, you know, you are right to think that you must only eat some meat. And if you eat certain meat, you would sin. He never told him that. But he was still bringing them to the unity of it because if you notice good, he pointed out that the one who actually was, was esteeming one day above the other or restraining himself from certain meat and believing this is some mark of holiness. He identified in the statement that they were weak. But also was pointing out to those who know the truth are in full knowledge of the truth that they should not shun intimidate or reject those who are in the body of Christ because they are weak got it that's how he's bringing them to unity but the unity would still point that even the one who is on in one day would then not think that he is somehow more holy than the one who is not because he did correct the matter, didn't he? Yes, he says, who he said in Romans 14, who are you to judge another man? Servant to his own master, he stands or falls. Instead, he will be made to what? Stand. Why? For God is able to what? Make what, what he's talking about stand. Make him stand to the one who is weak. He's not saying make him stand to the one who's strong. The one who's strong is standing already. It's the one who is weak, he's saying, because of his difference of position in his weakness of faith. He, God is still able to make him. So if he stand, will there be a difference? No, both the weak and the strong would be standing. So then Paul was not affirming and making the weak one feel like stay weak because that's a good position to be. God asks you to see me. No, he said, God is able to make you stand. In other words, we must have the same position. It shouldn't be that we standing and you sitting. Uh-uh. So he says, so he says the weakness is not being accommodated for you to keep weak. It is being accommodated for your growth. To become what? Strong. Hallelujah. That's why it says leadership is given for what? The unity of the faith. Now look at this. It says one esteem one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. What? Let each be what? Convinced in his own mind. Is he saying then we should not teach them for them to be convinced in their own mind? No. He's just saying that we are not going to reject them because they are not convinced. Got it? Because he says, they'll still be in the teaching to get it, to be convinced. Give me some more, let me show you there. He says, he who observes the day, observe it to who? To the Lord. He who does not observe the day, to the Lord what? Is that a strike against him because he doesn't observe the day? No, because he says, he who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God, God thanks. He who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat. Does that, is that a strike against him because he doesn't eat? No, because he said, he still gives God thanks. And none of us live to him. No one dies to himself. He's talking about those in the body of Christ. Come on now. Give me more there. Let me show you something. He says, for if we live, huh? we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or we die, who are we? We belong to the Lord. So he says, for to this end what? Christ died 
and rose and lived again and that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living but why do you judge your brother why do you show contempt for your brother for we shall all stand what for the judgment seat of Christ come on is it showing contempt to correct I'm asking you no right because the contempt is talking about where they hold off that person from the fellowship he said no if God brought them in weak they are not going to stay weak got it let me show you that also let me give it further up in the scripture probably in the earlier verses it says about the one who is weak all right that's right in verse 1 to 3 he says receive one who is what weak in faith but so who would he be telling to receive one who is weak in faith the one who is strong in faith he wouldn't be telling the weak to receive the one who is weak in faith they are already weak but, but that's why he made a statement. God is able to make that one stand. Look at it. For one believes he may what? But look at the next statement. But he who is weak. So Paul did not leave it out to say, you know, no, it's not weak or weak. You just see it differently. No, Paul said, no, he's weak or weak in faith. You lack a certain knowledge in the faith. And Paul made sure to indicate to him, say, that should be something you're boasting. Not only vegetables. He said, no, you, sh you need to be understand yourself. That's baby talk. So he says, yes, your comments are baby. You can learn more. But the thing is that Paul made it clear, the one who only eats vegetables is weak in faith. The weak there is not weak about physical strength because he eats vegetables. He's talking about what he said in verse 1. Weak in faith. Come on now. So he says, let him who eats, let not him who eats. You see, the, you see? the strong one first is addressing. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. You see it now? Let not him who does not eat judge him who eats for God as what? Now God receive the weak and the strong. Come on. But he doesn't receive the weak to remain weak. And he doesn't receive the strong to just remain say I'm strong. He wants the strong to be stronger. So he says he will be stronger if he's able to facilitate and to encourage and build the weak rather than saying I'm strong I don't need weak around me because what would his strength be for if he's just strong people around him see so the, the, the leadership Paul is writing to the church at Rome to bring unity in their faith huh? and unity also in the knowledge of the son of God they would not come into that unity by themselves the friction would continue without the correction and Paul wrote the correction to correct the friction got it when we are having friction in our joints it means that some substance and thing that was between the joints have been dried out and then the bone is actually rubbing and bone and you can tell say well if well i don't know if you can tell but any all oh, you experience that you you can tell that's not something you want to keep up i mean people take pills for it injection for it change diet for it doing all kind of things because at the end of the day when there's friction in the body is not a happy day for the body and if it is so in the physical body how much more so in the spiritual because what is in the physical is temporary but what is in the spiritual is eternal you got it 
So leadership is given to bring those what? Correction. Leadership is bring to, given to what? Bring those correction. In other words, if we were all as a body of Christ under leadership, without leadership, then person could say, I come here when I feel like coming. Some do. <laughs> but if you just come here when you feel like come here and have service when you feel like have it here, there would be some clashes of who come in here to have service here. And regarding what, how the order of the service is run would also have a clash without leadership. Because then you'd have some people singing and dancing and clapping when some people lie down, bawling and praying. Some running around the place and shouting hallelujah while others sleep, prostrate on the ground, crying and weeping before God. It would be disorder. Leadership is given to call all those activities into a role that it proves more effective and beneficial to the whole than individuals just getting their own satisfaction. You get it? Because if each individual has come for their own satisfaction, you will come and get satisfied, but you don't get no fellowship. The point in coming to the assembly is to build fellowship. Huh? That's what it's about. So it says, the leadership is given to the church to what? To equip the saints for ministry. Though they are saints, though they are blush, blood washed, though they are clean, though they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they still need to be equipped, to be trained. Come on. To be edified. Come on. Built up and nourished in the word of truth till they all come to the unity of the faith and of the what? Knowledge of the Son of God. How much so? To a perfect man. Perfect man, they're saying. That the man is sound. When person is sound, they are not double-minded and their mind is not all over the place. They are not what they would call schizophrenic. Multiple personality. What they call personality disorder. It's still call a disorder. Right, so it says, if you come into a perfect man, it says, it comes to soundness. That when we come praising the Lord, when we come worshiping the Lord, when we come believing and trusting and declaring the Lord, we are all declaring the same thing. It wouldn't be contradicting each other, opposing each other, indifferent to each other. That did not come from the Lord. That came from the devil. Come on. And Jesus know except leadership is maintained in the body. More disruptive and uh, contamination will come into the body to destroy the integrity of what he built. And that is what the devil is aiming to do. Come on. You get it? So some would say, I don't need it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> but the Lord who is your shepherd gave you under shepherds, which is called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And he said, he gave some to be. He didn't give all to be. He gave some to be. Some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. All are not. But he says the body needs them for their, the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. And for them to become what? To the full measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is where the, the, the synergy, the point of all the giftings and the knowledge coming together to play its effective role. It's in verse 13. Hallelujah. Where it says, verse 14. He says then that it comes to the point that they, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with. In other words, it would eliminate the things 
that is causing instability in the body. Because while there are true teachers teaching, false teachers are also gathering. While there are teachers declaring and teaching the disciples, there are also agents of Satan sent out to pervert the minds of those who are being discipled with other words, other gospel. That is really not the gospel. Come on. And several times Paul had to address that. In every one of his letters, he had to address something that they were hearing otherwise, and that he had to tell them, This is the revelation the Lord gave to me, and it's wise for you to follow this. Come on. Now. And so, because he says they are given under his leadership, correct? Right, so it says then, we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with what? Every wind of doctrine by what? The trickery of men. He's not talking about doctrine here from true pastors and apostles and prophets. He's talking about the teachings that are from false teachers. False apostles, false prophets. They are not really apostles and prophets, but they present themselves to be so. Got it? And he, call, he says they, they are not mistaken in what they are doing. It's not a slight oversight of the mind. He says this is done in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. They tailor together certain words knowing it is misleading and draw certain scriptures to match that deceptive idea and put it forth as the word. So he says, this is not some oversight and mistake in judgment. Paul doesn't call it that at all. Paul says, this is deliberately done. And if you think that it is a mistake, keep following them. You will find where their mistake lead you to. Come on. God, the Lord referred to them as blind leaders. And he said, what does happen with blind leaders? <laughs> they fall into the pit. And he says, also those who have followed them, also fall with them. Huh? Let them, yeah, that's, that's what Jesus said to his disciples, you know. Let them alone. He never said, run them down and try to convince them so they can say the same thing we are saying. He said, uh-uh. If they were hearing the Father, they would have our message. It's because they have taken it upon themselves to tailor their own message. That's why they're in opposition to those who are still hearing from the Father. That's what Jesus showed them. The disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? What did Jesus say? And next time I'll try to say it better so I can win them. How do you think I should say it? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'll try the next time so they don't get offended. Because they're really our brothers. I, I, I hear some Christians respond some way today that I wonder, is it Jesus they're following? Because why didn't Jesus respond that way? Come on. Jesus responded and said, every plant which my father has not planted will be uprooted he's saying this is clear that some who are planted the Lord did not plant them and he says everyone that is planted that is not planted by the Lord will be uprooted that was signaled and declared in the parable Jesus gave about the wheat and the tears in Matthew 13. Remember? And we look at that afterwards. 
But I'm showing you that the, the, this is confirming that every statement Jesus made, you don't find a point where he said this year, and this year that he said is contradicting what he said here. But you find that it complements what he said. And you find that also consistent in what Paul is saying. In what James is saying. In what John is saying. In what Peter is saying. Got it? Because it's the same father. Watch that. He says, he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be what? Uprooted. So what did he say? Let them alone. Don't trouble them. Don't even try to convince them. They are what? Blind leaders of what? In other words, if those notice that they're blind and still following them, they're even more blind than them. Because leaders are on a higher level than those who are following them. So if in blind, how much blind are they? That he should be leading them. Got it? Ah, uh -huh. He says, they are blind leaders. But who are they leaders of? Blind leaders don't lead in those who see. He said, they, they have their team. They have their fan club. They have their support group. But not because they have a large support group means that God approved it. Do you hear what the Lord said? So he says, they are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both falls into a ditch. Come on now. Huh? That is surely not confirming that they are on the right path. One day they will get it. Not at all. <laughs> Come on. Huh? Hallelujah. Now Jesus spoke about those, the parable of the wheat of the tears in Matthew 13. He spoke about that and he said to them, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who what? sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way now notice where did the enemy sow the tears in the master's field the enemy did not sow it in his own field mark that Right, he it, it, it says it's like a man sowing good seeds. Where the man sowing good seeds in his own field, but he says while men slept, the, his enemy came and sowed among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, in other words, at the point of those who are sown by the master in his own field at the point of their growth and fruitfulness who you think should be up to spoil the crop the tears notice is when they're ready to produce crop they show up because they're there to destroy the fruitfulness of what the master is sowing in the house you got it right so it says then that what else yes it says so the servants of the owner came and said sir do we did you not sow good seeds in your field see he said it's your field and didn't you sow good seeds in your field how then does it have tears come on and he said to them an enemy have done this so the servant said to him, do you want us then to go and get them up the way? Do we pull up those tears now out from amongst the wheat? But what did he say? No, lest while you're gathering up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. 
In other words, you hurt or destroy the good ones while you're trying to pull up the bad ones. And he said, for the sake then of the good ones coming to full term, make them stay. Oh, you need to understand this thing. Come on, somebody. That's why we, I was talking about it the other day, you know, that sometimes the worldlings, they call them worldlings. The world don't like to hear we say, it's we that is keeping you here. But it is true. Because notice, the only reason the tears of existence in the field of the master is because the wheat is still there. The wheat has not finished coming in its fullness of fruitfulness. Huh? And the master says, we're not spoiling the crop because of those who come around to hinder the crop. Ah, oh, come on somebody. You got it? So what did he say? Aha. He says, let both grow together until the harvest and at that time of the harvest i will say to who the reapers first gather together the tears why first the tears why not first the wheat come on somebody yeah, because the the tears are unfruitful but the weeds have already come in their fruitfulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But he says, but gather the wheat. Huh? Gather the wheat. He said, gather together the tears and bind them into bundles to burn them. In. And, 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 and the Lord showed me a vision in that with the bundles being put together. He says, that's why you see that there are groups forming in the world. Different sects and groups being formed. They are coming together into bundles. They are coming under leadership. Because there is leadership chosen for them too. Just like we say the blind leaders is leaders of the blind. Hallelujah. Come on. You're following this? So he said, there is going to be a bond. That's why you see certain burden of certain belief. Those who believe in the, in, in the universe. And those who believe in, 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 in the stars coming together. And those who believe in the rainbow. You know, you're neither black nor white. But you're a rainbow. I'm proud to be a rainbow. Skittles. Hallelujah. Yeah, but he's saying, hey, you need to understand they are gathering together under leadership. They, they, they were scattered and many of them in hiding before leadership came in. That they said they formed a the group of the what? L, B, G, well, the alphabet soup. Uh, yeah, so, so he says, they come under leadership, now they have a champion to push their cause. And the more they have a champion to push their cause, the more those who are in hiding who wouldn't say publicly or show publicly they were in it. Now coming out in the street and say, I'm proud. Hello. Leadership. They, 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 are, they are clinging to leadership. Even in the world. No, sir. Oh, come on. And it is evident in the world that there is leadership in it. Because there are persons in the world that, that still don't do no beaching out and tattoo and no, 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 jap off pants and, and no. <coughs> but, but, but those who came under that leadership, we found that they were bleaching out. They were. They turn, just like why he said turn their skin into coloring book more tattoo shops open for them to facilitate that and they then had this wild illicit relationships with each other rough sex that they said is what they uh, 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 
You don't even need to know. Praise God. A dagger in. Uh, right. Right. So with the, the, those things cause a lot of person to be in the hospital where some person's wounds were shifted. Some person's sexual organs were broken. It's leadership called them to that, you know. Leadership. Leadership come and start to talk what they want to hear. And they say, man, that, 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 that they say, in, in put it together the way I want to say it, but I couldn't say it myself. So every leadership, whether blind or seen, whether righteous or unrighteous, have its own crowd. Is speaking something and putting together something for some people who want that. And they, that's all it says. They are being bound into bundles. You get it? They are being put into bundles because it's one of the things that tie them around that keep them in a bundle. And that's what leadership do. It holds the body together. And he says, then he's saying, just as the Lord himself is sending out leadership the devil is sending out some too come on somebody he's sending out some too so while there were men who would talk about now you have the women coming out and saying why I'm why this I'm why that I'm why the bungle And boy, I can't manage a farm. Right? So, in other words, they are coming with things that those who have an ear for that who want to hear will gravitate to. And everyone, whether they in the church or out the church, will fall under some leadership. That's why it was so specific that it said in Ephesians 4 verse 11 Christ himself gave some to be apostles he himself does the choosing I mean even when Matthias was to be chosen to replace Judas who betrayed the Lord because Judas betrayed him is still being as an apostle and I made that statement this morning. Chosen of God doesn't mean that you're saved. Judas was chosen of God. But he was not saved. And some boast in the idea of being chosen. I'm chosen of God. <laughs> what is what you do? When you are chosen, we will determine if you have a stay in this. You get it? It's not just being chosen and appointed. It's what you do with being chosen and appointed. We will determine the end result. No, sir. And we found that those who were true to who chose them had faithful results. But those who were not faithful to who chose them did not have the same result as Judas did. He did not have the same result. Jesus said it, huh? That he chose the twelve. He what? He chose the twelve. And I'm sure that it is by the Holy Ghost he chose them. This wasn't something done out of the flesh. This is something he went up many nights in the hills to pray until the Lord led him to who he would choose for leadership in his church. Yet still he says, one of you is a devil. You are there witnessing what I'm doing amongst those who are chosen, but I know you're not one of us. You are just here to witness the integrity of the work and despite what you are used to do, it will still not destroy the integrity of the work. The Lord could have put him out a long time. But the Lord kept him there. Ah. 
because you see if you have to hide from the enemy the work lack integrity <laughs> but if you can do it in the face of the enemy it proves the integrity and the substance of the work being done that it is infallible unshakable and deeply rooted and cannot be easily moved by the opposition that is around it no wonder the lord could say to david it, david said in the psalm 23 don't be pierced a table before me in the presence of my enemy you didn't make my en get my enemy out of the way and did not prepare the table you prepare the table while he's sitting there and judas was there at that table <laughs> And the Lord was able to say, as, as, as David was saying, he said, you prepare a table before me. Because he was there anointing their feet. And declaring who he is. Come on. But he was able to declare also who was not. Wasn't that so? Come on. You got it? So we know then that shepherds are given to bring unity in the body of Christ the unity is not to facilitate a certain uh, denomination or a certain denominational belief the unity is to bring them in the knowledge of the son huh? the knowledge of the what the son and the unity of the faith to a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That they should no longer be what? Children tossed to and fro. In other words, he recognized their outside influences that is causing them to malfunction. You got it? And he said if this is corrected, then they will not be a victim of those schemes. Of deception cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but he says but speaking the truth in love what is the result there they may grow up in all things into who him who is the head who is the head Christ you see it Christ is still the head of the church come on so he says, Christ didn't send us to, make, to cause you to be divided. It's to cause you to be one in the faith. Whether you say you're Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, Church of God, New Testament, Pente what they call Anglican. Let me just say Anglican. Anglican. Yes, Lord. Uh, Presbyterian and all the other name, full gospel, church of God, holiness. And some slap the whole of them together. Baptist holiness, church of God, Pentecostal seven day. I don't care how much name you put on it. The word of God says Christ gave apostles to bring us in the unity of the faith. In other words, whatever differences are there, there is an answer to bring us together in the truth. In that, that means no one has to remain ignorant. No one has to remain off and indifferent to us. If they are truly embracing truth. Got it? And Paul made that clear in saying that Christ is not divided. Christ is what? I heard something. The church is divided. And the church is divided. You don't know what God made the church. No, the church is not divided. Christ is not divided and the church is not divided. But there are persons on that church name that is divided because they are pretty much as the tears that are sown amongst the wheat. They are in the field of the Lord, but not of the Lord. 
and he says there's a time coming they will be removed come on now that is something for persons to take note of and check where is my standing in the Lord how is my, my understanding in truth have I allowed bias false impressions and preferences and favoritism to manipulate and corrupt my judgment of what is true come on now so he, Paul said it here it has been declared to me that's first Corinthians 1 verse 11 to 13 he says it has been declared to me concerning you my virgin by those of Chloe's household that there are contentions among you now I say this that each of you says what they say one sex say I am of Paul another sex say no I am of Apollos another sex say I am of Cephas that's Peter another one say I'm not of Cephas or Peter or Paul I'm of Christ And you don't you don't want to mention the names of those who Christ sent. So he said he gone straight to the source. So it's better. What did Paul say about them? Paul said, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? In other words, Paul didn't come preaching Paul. Peter didn't come preaching Peter. Come on, Apollos didn't come preaching Apollos. None of them baptized anyone in their name. They all baptized them in the name of Jesus. So he says, who did we present to you? Whether it is Paul or Apollos or Peter. Who did we present to you? Christ. So he says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Not at all. Come on, somebody. Give me some more here. What did Paul say? Paul said, I thank God I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say that what? I had baptized them in my own name. Lord Jesus. Imagine Paul putting that in writing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure he wasn't saying this sarcastically. It's something that was realistic about what people were saying that he got feedback on. <laughs> and he said, yes, I also baptize the household of Stephanas. Beside, I do not know whether I baptize any other. And said, in other words, there may be others that I can't recall. Come on. But he said he was sure he never baptized none of them in his name. And what next he said? He said, for Christ did not send me to baptize. <gasps> oh dear. A pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, a Apostles say, Christ did not send him to baptize. Didn't Christ say, make disciples of the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Ah. He says, the main objective is not the baptism. The main objective is Christ. Did you hear it? Ah. He says, Christ did not send to baptize, but to what? Preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words. Less what? The cross of Christ should be made of no effect. How would the cross of Christ be made of no effect? Is the preaching just about the cross of Christ? No, he's saying, 
for persons to receive the gospel that he preached, they must see this need for mortifying the deeds of the flesh. That's what the cross is about. There must be self-denial. There must be humility. Grace is given to the humble, not to the proud. Come on, somebody. You got this? Huh? He said the message, that's why the message of the cross is foolishness to who? Because they don't, they are not going to allow their flesh to go through that torture. They're going to pet and powder that flesh and fluff it and powder it and sweet it up and pretty up as long as they can till it dead. But Paul is saying, if that was the objective of Christ, he couldn't go to the cross. And if that's the objective of Christ's disciples, he wouldn't tell them, take up the cross and follow me. He said, if you do not embrace the suffering that comes with being obedient to God, you will negotiate when to be obedient and at times turn away from God when it is not convenient to your flesh. That's why the cross is a major requirement for those who is accepting the gospel. Because it cries out for that place of self-denial. It cries out for that place of humility. Cries out for that place of consistent loyalty to God even unto death. Come on. And even the most painful and agonizing of death, he calls it the death of the cross. Come on now. Now many don't want to welcome this kind of message because this ain't no jump and shout hallelujah and huff and puff. Oh. But it meets the heart of the gospel. And the Lord is saying, if you don't die to the flesh, you cannot truly live to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to be conditioned in truth according to how your flesh feels. The Holy Spirit is going to give you the truth according to how God declare it. Come on, somebody. He says, what he hears, he will speak. Glory to God. Huh? What he hears, he will. Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. And said, when he come, he will not speak on his own authority. That's in John 16, verse 13 to 15. He says, however, when he... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you what? Into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. He is not determined of himself what he is going to say to you. He is not opinionated. And the Lord uncovered that to me and said, Son, have you noticed that when my son came, he never spoke of his own authority? And he's the model for you. And he said, you notice even when the helper come, that the son said he could do nothing of himself without the spirit. The helper himself who is coming to help you does not speak of his own authority. He says, where you think so many believers get their own opinion speaking from? And he brought me right back to John chapter 8 verse 44. That that's how the devil is the father of lies. Because he doesn't rely on the source of truth. 
He will lie on his own opinion. He's not a liar because he feels to be a liar. He's a liar because he's not loyal to the truth. When he speaks, you got that? Right? Anything that is not loyal to truth cannot be true. Watch this. He says, you, the Lord said to those persons, you are of your father. So he was not just talking to the devil, but he's talking to people who carry the trait and behavior, character and nature of the devil. And he says the devil is their father because of the similarity of their behavior. He says you are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father, the devil, you want to do. Like a child wanting to please their daddy. So he says your behavior show who is your daddy. You get it? He said, if you don't carry the heart and nature of your father, you have a different one. And that's what Jesus made clear. He says, you are of your father's level. The desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. So he says, that's why you want to kill me. Huh? Because it's your father speaking to you. He's the one compelling you to behave like that. Huh? Not true. So he says, he's a murderer from the beginning and does not what? Stand in the truth. They did say and claim and speak some things that were references from the truth. But they did not stand in it. Huh? They did not stand in it. In other words, the more Jesus talked with them, the further away from the truth they went. They started out believing in him in John 8 verse 30. But the more he conversed with them in John 8 verse 36, 37, then he finds it, it's going downhill. Their level of receiving truth is getting less and less instead of getting more and more. And Jesus identified that you are working then by a different father. That's why it is so. It's not because we just different and you see different from me. That's what the world claims, not true. But Jesus don't teach us to see it that way. The world is not to teach us what is truth. It's we who hear the truth. Jesus Christ and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth that must teach the world what is truth. But instead many trying to get wise by the world. To bring counsel to the church. <laughs> it's not the world who give you truth. Is the spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you truth. Come on now. The whole world is under the sway of the devil. You can't go to the devil seeking for truth. Hello. Hallelujah. Now, sir. So he says, they do not stand in truth because what? There is no truth in him. And also is pointing out, there is no truth in them. In other words, they had wombs that were, that, that were like, that, that could not contain and hold the seed to its fullness. They had miscarrying wombs. Not that word wasn't sown to them, but it didn't bring forth any fruit. They were barren. You see, tears don't bring forth fruit. Is wheat bring forth fruit. And they were sown amongst the wheat by the enemy. But we found that they didn't have the fruit to match what the wheat had. You got it? You get it? 
So that's why he says, when he speaks, he who? The devil speaks. He speaks from his what? That's what own opinion means. That's what own opinion means. You got your opinion, I got mine. Yes, that's own resources. But he says, Jesus didn't preach opinion. The Holy Spirit don't come with opinion. And they are God. So where do we get the opinion from? That's the source. The devil, who is called the father of lies. He's a liar. And the father of it. Why is a liar and a father of it? He does not abide in the truth. And there's no truth in him. And when he speaks, there's no loyalty to truth. He speaks from his own resources. Come on. You got it? That's why we are called to a different level. Leadership is there to call you to a level. To understand truth. To fellowship with truth. And to bear the fruit that truth has brought into your life. That others can see. You are truly disciples of Christ. Huh? Hello? You getting it? So he says, it's to bring the whole body together as one in verse 16 of Ephesians 4. From whom the whole body joint and knit together by what? Every what? Every joint has a part to play. According to the effective working by which every part does it share? Every part has a part to play. Causes what? Growth of the body for what? The edifying of itself in love. Come on. Those who corrupt, pervert, create this order in the body of Christ will come under serious judgment. The word of God says, the, 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 the temple of God, huh? anyone, he says, who defile the temple of God will not be left guiltless. They will pay for it. Because the Lord didn't call and send servants to the body to create more disorder in the body. For who want to sure they can preach better than who and who can preach longer and who can have a bigger crowd and who can get the most crowd response that is not what authenticate the quality of a minister and his work in the body he says each one must do its part play its effective role for the growth of the body in love no so he said, do you not know you are what? The temple of God and that the spirit of God who dwells in you. Huh? If anyone what? Defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is what? Holy which temple you are. God is holy because he is pure. And he says we must be holy for he is holy. Huh? And he said we mustn't just want to be holy, think to be holy, try to be holy. No, he says you must be holy in all your conduct. Yeah. Your pastors come on TikTok cussing bad word. Sending out a post and cursing. Come on. Bad word. Inappropriate language. Yeah. Inappropriate suggestions. Yeah. Come on. Did Christ do that? When you speak for Christ, 
Do you forget who you're speaking for? Are you allowed the freedom to say anything you feel and still be a servant of God? Come on. And the things that they come out and say, I have to look in and say, is there no fear of God left in them? Come on, somebody. My God. Hello. Peter said in first Peter 4, verse 11. Anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let them do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things, what? God may be glorified through who? Jesus Christ, to whom belong what? The glory and the dominion. How long? Forever and ever. Amen. Come on, somebody. He says, we must understand we are ambassadors of Christ. And ambassadors of Christ is not ambassador of yourself. It's not ambassador of your own pipe dreams and visions. It's of what the Lord requires. Dying to self to see his self manifest in you. Huh? And he says, in doing so, you are able to disarm the enemy. As when the enemy come looking for you, he can't find you. All he can find is Christ. <laughs> come on, somebody. And Christ is the true and living Lord. Come on. Reason with all power, all authority, both in heaven and in earth. And he told us he has given us power over all unclean spirits, sir. Huh? That what we bind on earth, we bound in him. Whatever we loose on earth is, is look in and he's backing us up to accomplish the job. He's giving us the power to do it. But it's not power for us to do what we feel to do and say we got power. Because as I taught many times here, a true son is not one that has power, but is one who has power under control. It's not just knowing you have power, it's what you do with it. Oh, Jesus. And many are abusing the power God has given to them. And will soon no doubt find out that they are disqualified for the kingdom. Because they made it all about them and not all about Christ. Hello. And that's what he's called us to model. Christ in you. Huh? The hope of glory. To present every man perfect in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are here to what? Present every man perfect perfect in Christ. The fivefold ministry is given for that reason. Glory to God. It's not to present you perfect in us. It's in Christ. Come on. To them God will to make known what? What are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Which is what? Christ in you the hope of glory. Him we preach Warning what? Every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that he may present what? We may present every man what? Perfect in Christ. We have a work to do to present you perfect in Christ. It's not you present yourself perfect in Christ. The workers are given to present you perfect in Christ. According to the context that is written there, you will see that is true. Come on now. That we present every man 
perfect in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody give him the praise. I wish we had more time to go more and more. Wouldn't we? Our time is running out, so we got to give time for questions and comments and feedback. Those who are online, feel free to write your comment or to write your question. We'll address it as much as we have time to do so. So don't wait until we over to punch it in. You wanted to do it while you have the time. Now, even if someone is talking in the house, you punch in yours and we'll read it afterwards and give an audience to it so we can address it in the house. Amen. Praise God. Those who are inside, you can feel free to step up to the mic here and make your comment or your questions. How do we want to hear you and get feedback of what you're getting out of this? Praise God. Your time. Good night. Praise God. All right. Um, it was good being here tonight. And um, regarding the scripture where you're talking about the blind leading the blind, mm -hmm. I was recalling speaking to my coworker as I was mm -hmm. telling you about the yes. blind leading the blind. And she was telling me that her leader, she knows that he is in a homosexual relationship because they see him after church going. I said, why would you continue with someone like that? And she said, remember, persons, she was quoting the scripture that was talking about preaching to others when you yourself can be lost. I don't know where that scripture is taken from, probably from Corinthians, to say you can preach to others and possibly be lost. And I said, but why would you still want to follow someone like that? She said, because she knows the truth. But then you're saying as well, you can't be above who is leading you in no. truth. So even though you might say you know the truth, you can't be following someone who is, you who said, speaks it. the truth, but not living the truth. Who does know it. So, yeah. Because the, 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 who you're following has influence on your character and behavior. Mm -hmm. The whole means of discipleship is that you're learning ways and teaching and traits from your leader. And Jesus said it, that it is good for a disciple to be like his teacher. No, sir. He didn't say it is bad. He said it is good for a student to be like his teacher, for a disciple to be like his master. So he says that that is what you are going to become like. That's why I could say then, if they are calling the master, the house builds him up. What will they call those who are following him? So if, if he, the leader, is an homosexual and they are submitting to that homosexual leader, what will people call those who follow in that leader? Get it? Even worse, <laughs> because they are followers to him. And so if, if they call Jesus who was righteous, in negative terms, Beelzebub, Beelzebub, and and what gluttonous friend of sinners have a demon a Samaritan come on we know that there are more ugly names they brought out for him he's saying he's mad and he's beside himself and you're still listening to him <laughs> right so but, but the thing is that the Lord made it clear that he was not that kind of person. But if you know the person is that kind of person and you still subscribe to the leadership, what does that now make of you? That's the point. Because uh, there's, there's no way Jesus would tell you that person is to follow such a leader. To still be under leadership. That is corrupt, fallen, broken, and proven to be a child of devil. Because Paul made it clear, even not even speaking about leadership, but even amongst membership in the church in 1 Corinthians 5. Paul said to the church there, this brother that took his, his father's wife, he said, don't even eat with him. So how would they... Be under the leadership of one who is uh, is more than just take father wife. Which father wife? Paul said that shouldn't even be mentioned in the church. But more so now, an homosexual. Come on now, and you're saying yes, he's my godly leader. Is Christ a homosexual? 
So how can he be an, a representative of Christ being an homosexual? Christ represent the Father and show the purity and the wholeness of the Father that he could say to the disciple when they were asking show us the Father he said when you see me you see him huh praise God so those who are representing Christ must be able to say when person say show me Jesus he said when you see me you see him as Paul could say, follow me as I follow Christ. He never said, follow Christ and I follow him too. No, he put himself as a leader to say, follow me as I follow him. Not follow me how you feel to follow him. Follow me how I follow him. And that is big. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, what stood out for me as well was where you say being chosen doesn't mm -hmm. automatically mean you're saved True. because there's a popular thing on the internet that speaks of most persons who are chosen in the Bible and then it speaks of their fall. So mm -hmm. they'll say, God still used Moses and he you know, struck the rock. God used Sarah and they, they list all the names of people. God used David even though he's... And it's basically to say... Anything that you are, God will you are. accept you as you are, but not necessarily promoting all the other things that they did. So basically they would say Moses was a blind leader because he disobeyed at one point, but they're not going to focus on all the other things that he did in obedience to God. No, the, the first thing they need to recognize, the, the Hebrew writer, made it clear that Moses was faithful to God in all his house. All his house. So they need to go back to scriptures and, and go get schooled again. Because the thing is that when they make a one-off incident into something that is a practice that is far from scripture, they have one incident with Moses striking the rock when the Lord told him to speak to the rock for the person to get the water and through that one incident the Lord told Moses he would not go into the promised land he would only see it but he would not enter it so, so, so there was punishment and consequence Moses faced for it it wasn't applauding for him and it wasn't said because you are you're called and chosen by God God will still use you anyhow. Not at all. In fact, that, struck, that strike, that Moses strike, caused him not to enter the promised land. So how is it that they can use it to say, he's used anyway and he's chosen of God? No. So they need to understand, that was not a practice of Moses. And so God still declared him faithful. That one-off incident wasn't a practice. And we don't see many other cases of that recurring or any other example of reference of Moses ever do something like that before or after. David with Bathsheba. Oh, that was a one-off incident. It, didn't, it take, didn't take several sleeping with Bathsheba to get her pregnant. One night... That was done. One night, and we never had an episode of David doing that again. David's Psalms of repentance is in Psalm 51. And we could hear how oh, solemn and how oh, bitter and remorseful and regretful he was over that, that he never went back there. No other occasion read David ever do anything like that. So how do you make the one incident make him into an adulterer and a murderer right they, they, you see so so that's what they're missing they're missing the point that repentance is turning away from the thing and if you turn away from it you don't go back to it again it's more than just saying sorry huh Come on, even when they're quoting about Abraham, Mr. Elias said it was his sister when it wasn't his sister. 
Abraham didn't lie that it was his sister. It was really his sister. Just that it was different father and different mother. So it's what we would call, you know, Jamaican term, a half sister. Right? And it was allowed to do so to marry in the family because they wanted to keep the same faith. But the Lord made it clear to him, to Abraham, Abraham, walk straight before me and be perfect. Ah. Huh? And from that moment, we never hear of Abraham telling anyone again, so is my sister. And they take away his wife and God, if you make work out, somebody get him out again. You see, that point shows true repentance because true repentance shows you don't return to that address and get in that entangled again and say, that, well, the Lord still chose me. Those who are preaching the sins of what men of God committed and trying to pass it off as God still qualifying them as being right is promoting sin as part of justification and that is not part of the gospel that's why we say it is deceitful plotting deceit it was not an error in judgment it was deceitfully put together and tailored and said that way to give a false impression therefore misleading the ears to think it doesn't matter what you do god loves you and if god chose you you're going right and that's not true god chose judas but he was not all right and the lord called him a son of the devil and he died and the word of god says he kept all except the son of perdition which he referred to is judas he says he was lost and the lord made it further to say he was doomed from the beginning come on that is serious huh praise god yes from sister simone online yes. she writes thanks are possible for the word not only yes. that but living the life of Christ. I always try convincing persons about you and at times their response is negative because there are more hirelings out there than good shepherd. Mm -hmm. I thank God for you teaching us the doctrines of Christ that equips me to live a life in Christ that will have an impact on others which come in contact with me. Also what stood out the most that even if God calls you it does not mean you are safe but it's mm -hmm. the life that we live daily faithfully to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. So it's more than just saying I'm called and I'm chosen. Uh -uh. <laughs> you find that it was Matthew chapter 10 or Luke chapter 10. I believe it's Luke chapter 10. He said the 70 others were chosen. Luke 10. He says 70 others were chosen. So not just the 12 was chosen. 70 others were chosen to lead. And then in St. John 6, verse 66, we find that he says, all of them left the Lord and walked with the Lord no more. And then it was back to the 12. Now, anyone of a church and have a church of, of many disciples, but 12 are appointed as leaders. And then 70 more leaders are appointed. Is a large congregation for 70 more to be appointed. When, when 70 leaders step out of a church, you know how much people who are followers are going to walk with them? They would look and then say, Jesus ministry flop because look there. Look how much disciple leave him. Look how much he had before and look how much he had now. It was no failure on Jesus' part. Now how he run the ministry, it was the exposing of the hearts of those who came with him. And he was willing to start it all over again. Because he still asked the 12, you want to go to? Come on. And Peter answered and said, Lord, where shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. And we, have, we believe and have come to know that you are the Christ. Come on now. Huh? 
the son of the living God. Hallelujah. They had a witness within them to testify that. But the Lord revealed that it's not all of them that not with Peter and say, yes, we believe so, was so. That's why the Lord repeated and then said, but one of you is a devil. <laughs> I chose you 12, but it's not the devil chose the 12. It's not the devil chose Judas. The Lord chose him. But the Lord said, you're of the devil. You're a devil, man. He didn't just say, after the devil, he said, you're a devil. <laughs> One of you is a devil. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so, we got to understand, truth will expose those who are not true. That's why you have to keep declaring the truth. We can't declare the truth only when it's convenient, only when people want to hear it, just when it is satisfying to those who hear. But we got to understand that truth is speaking volumes to us and demanding proper response. Huh? huh? Demanding what? Proper response. Without a proper response to truth, you can't get the benefit of truth. And some just want to say, you have your truth and you have my truth and then there's God's truth. No, there's one truth. Come on now. It's not your truth and my truth and God's truth. There's one truth. Hello. So, but there's things that I could know a part of the truth and you know a different part of the truth. But if what I have is truth and what you have is truth, when we put it together, we don't see a clash. We see it actually complementing, giving more insight and revelation and what we both said. But when it is a lie, it doesn't give revelation to what was said. It contradicts what was said. That's how we know it's a lie. Because truth is consistent with truth. But lies conflict with truth. You got it? Yeah, so we, we know. The word that Jesus said it in Psalm Well, in John 17, verse 17, as he was praying, to his father for his disciples he says father sanctify them sanctify means to set apart he says sanctify them by your truth what is truth he says your word is truth that's why he said we don't live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god you can't have true relationship without truth you can't have true friendship without truth. Come on now. You cannot have a true love without truth. You cannot have a true life without truth. It means that everything that you speak about your life would be fabricated, which would mean it's a lie. So everything that God made and gave you is based upon truth. When you take away truth, you got nothing. Fabrication, saying things that are not so, causing things to appear in a way that it is really not, is falsehood and pretense, hypocrisy. Come on, somebody, that's not truth. So that's why it says you need truth. Huh? It's not just something you, you want that you must have. It's something you need. That he says you can't live by bread alone. You need every word and proceed out of the mouth of God. And he says what separates you from the world is the word of God. You take out the 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 the, the, the the hell, you take out the hell out of the world, you get the word. Write it down, you get it later. Praise God. You take the hell out of the word, you get the word. Because the word will guarantee that you have a new world. 
one in which righteousness dwells. What the world is trying to operate without the word, that's why they end up in hell. And no amount of education, no amount of jobs, no amount of, of work groups and opportunities and raise of income and opportunities going to make the world better until they accept the word of God. They could get all the police, all the soldiers, police the street, try to cramp them on all the guns, cramp them on all the, all the drugs, all the scamming, still having problems because it's the word of God that makes man right. Without the word, he's left to a wild imagination of his mind to choose what he thinks is right. And there's a way that appears to a man that is right, that leads to death. You got it? Yeah. So that's why we can't lean on our own understanding. We got to trust the Lord with all our hearts and lead not to our own understanding. He says, then you have your own understanding. That's what you call your own opinion. But the word of God says, by the word of God and the Holy Spirit, he says, Christ has given us an understanding. We gain that understanding of God and of ourselves and what he called us to do through the word and his Holy Spirit. Without the word, we would not know it. Come on, somebody. Who here would be able to speak without a language? <laughs> no one would. And language came from God. So how do you express yourself without a language? See? So what they are failing to do by ignoring the word. They are using the language that God gave them through word to create their own language, their own understanding, their own way of life without the word and that's how they end up in error. And the Lord says he, he, he has counted the wisdom of this world to become foolish because they through wisdom did not know God. They through what? Wisdom did not know God. Then God have this sermon to confuse and to confound the wise by using something they see as foolish but something that is profound to show his wisdom. Come on. And that's the word. He says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Which they call philosopher of this age. Call him disputer of this age. Has not God what? Made the wisdom of this world foolish? Come on. He says, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. They could have known God through the word. But they rejected the word to know him and trying to figure out themselves. Till they say man come from monkey. See it? So it says because they didn't through their wisdom they did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of what? The message that is being preached the gospel. To do what? Save everybody? No, it only save those who believe. Because those who don't believe are pretty much calling God a liar. And you can't call a God a liar and be saved. But when they preach and tell persons, say, no, it's not God, it's just millions of years, things come together and form and merge till it grow. And going to the beautiful world we have today. You mean that is science? That is not science. Last time I checked, science is based on laws like the law of gravity 
of elevation. Law. You never say theory. Theory is just opinion and view. Opinion and view is not science. Science is based on laws. Based on what? That's why they call gravity the law of gravity. They don't call it the theory of gravity. But evolution is called evolution theory. Therefore, it is not science. Come on. Because a big bang doesn't create order. To create order requires intelligence. Nature doesn't have intelligence. Nature go by force and matter and wit, heat, hot and cold. So it takes someone with a mind. Huh? You're not going to go out and find a car. Find a car well built with all the ignition and the transmission and the alternator and the and you say, you know, is that big bang cause this? Somehow all these metals just jump into the right place. And when you go in there, push your key, it start, you see? Someone with intelligence made it. That's the law of science. The law of science said if something was ordered and structured, it requires an intelligent mind to do it. The matter cannot do it itself. So if you left the chairs in here, no matter how the explosion hit the room, you're not going to come and find the chairs in piles and stacks in here and said, you know, says the explosion do that. Nature. <laughs> it would take somebody with an intelligent mind to come and put the chair into stacks. The chair cannot go in stock by itself. Not true. That's, that's what they call evidence of intelligence. So God's evidence of his intelligence is painted all over the world. Huh? That's what he said in Romans 1. Not true? He says, all the things, the attributes of the Godhead are revealed in the things that he created. Huh? It's revealed what? In the things that he created, it reveals the Godhead and all that is revealed. But he says, if they ignore it, that's what they go to, what they call idol worship. Huh? You see it? Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became what? Vain, futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were what? Darkened, professing to be wise. What became of them? They became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into what? An image made like corruptible man, birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Huh? Therefore God what? Gave them up to uncleanness in the loss of their heart. To dishonor their bodies among themselves. The dishonor follow because they choose to go by their own mind. Rather than by what the word of God said. And that's how sexual immorality starts. What they call promiscuous, sexual promiscuous living. Fornication. Huh? And then the fornication leads to worse homosexuality. Because fornication is sexual immorality. And homosexuality is also sexual immorality. It happened because they would not restrain themselves to be subjected to the word of God. They rather than to follow their flesh and their mind against what God's word said. And that's the result of it in the world we see now. Huh? Hallelujah. So they're committing things that are shameful. And then he says that break out into more other things because when people are doing things shameful, they lie about it. They pretend. They deceive. They covet. 
You get what I'm saying? All the lewdness, bare-facedness that follows, he said it's just the result of them turning from the word. So there it is in 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mind, they are whispers. Why? Because the shameful thing they're doing, now they're trying to pretend like it's not shameful. We want to keep a straight face. Trying to cover their nakedness with fig leaves, like what Adam and Eve did. And fig leaves cannot truly cover them. It's the same thing from the beginning they're still doing now. Impostors waxing worse and worse. Hallelujah. Those who are true to God are not impostors. What you say? Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. All right, time to release you. Any more comments or so? I don't want to finish off or say, I dare wait. Okay, fine. Hallelujah, give you time to release. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your grace and your anointing that is in the house. You are the one that called us to this marvelous grace in Christ. You know the weaknesses of this flesh and the, the weaknesses that we suffer in this world and the temptation and trials that are around us. But you declare that Christ in us is the antidote is the release of your power, your nature, your strength within us to rise above those odds and reveal your glory within us, your fullness. And so we are no longer a slave to sin, no longer slaves to fear to be used by the enemy to do his biddings and to become servants of sin that has the penalty of eternal separation from you. And the kingdom, your life, you have prepared for us in Christ Jesus. We pray grace will be released to the hearers. And as they hear tonight, it will not just be a nice word. But it will be some, a word that will bring the transformation. To make them true sons and daughters of the most high living God. We give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory. We pray healing and deliverance over those who have heard the word and believe. That you will confirm the word in their spirit with signs and with wonders. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good to share this word with you. Hope that you've really been blessed by it and meditate on it and use it to its purpose in your life. Amen. Give you a chance to sow before we release you and then. While you're doing that, we'll just speak the last word to those who are watching online. Those who are watching online and watching an Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministry International, we are here at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We want you to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And believe me, the gospel is full with it. Hallelujah. That those who truly desire to know can know. But those who resist, resist to their own damnation. Because only the gospel that Jesus preached can deliver you from the, the overwhelming attacks and scourge and, and onslaught of the enemy against your life. We pray that grace will raise you up to be the true being that God has called you to be in Christ Jesus. As ears of God and joint ears with Christ. The word of God said it is the Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. We have a book out there released last year. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. Subtitled The Gospel that Jesus Preached. We wanted to hear the word because we believe there's a lot of things being preached out there as gospel that really is not. And Paul spoke about that in Galatians 1. That some seek to pervert the gospel. Speaking of another gospel which is not another. But is a perversion of the gospel. Because they are mixing in their feelings and experiences and mixing in their opinions in the message Christ gave them to declare. Instead of declaring what Christ gave them to declare. <laughs> no holds barred. Declare the gospel of the kingdom. And so you can get that book. Look for it on Amazon.com. Type in, in Amazon.com Richard V. Fagan and the book will come up. And you can of course order it anywhere 
around the world or download it through Kindle to your device. And also, if you want to hear more of the teaching, just send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook and you'll be plugged into our live stream services. We have five live stream services per week and also six other services that are scripted that we are putting our daily bread. We can send the daily bread to you. We have our edition already out, which is from the month of January, February, March, and April. Already ready for you to read because we are ahead of the, 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 the script being put in book by the teachings that are still being downloaded in the house. So we are telling it's ready, a day-by-day -day teaching and bits and bytes of lessons for you to study daily. Just uh, send a message to us by the numbers on the screen and we'll just um, WhatsApp it to you or email it to you that you can read it for you and your family and enjoy the word and be the most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So you want to know more about us, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Those who desire to sow to the ministry and sow to the website, all the options are on the front. Any other questions, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876 839 9390. 876 557 2427. Looking forward to hear from you and to build your most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Be blessed tonight. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house. Good to share this time with you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Good. Have a great night in the Lord. Bless you all.